Hey guys, Mr. Kennedy here. I've got another Onshape video for you this morning. In the last one, we continued using the tools in Onshape to build this little train, and we started to learn some of those by doing things like uh, patterning and mirroring and using the extrude tool to create a cut. And I want to today introduce another few tools, and we might start also looking at creating a separate part and then using the assembly system to join them together. Uh, but we'll see how long the video goes. The assembly might end up being its own video, but we'll see how we go. So let's jump back into the software. Here we are here. This is pretty much where we got up to last video where we would created a rectangular prism and we made these wheel arcs and we cut this front bit out of the, out of the top of the train. The first thing that I'll, I'll just show you is over here on the feature tree, you can use these, if you hover over things, anything here, you can use these little eyeballs to turn vision of those on and off. And you can use that to really kind of just by turning off the vision of those three planes and perhaps even the origin point, it can make it a lot easier to see your object within the, within the studio. The only downside to that is that if I was to go and make a new sketch now, I wouldn't be able to use my dimension tool to link onto that origin point or onto the views of those planes because they don't exist. But even more so, for example, if I had this line here and I wanted to dimension it a certain distance away from the origin or from that center of my uh, that center plane, it's not there. But you can, even when you're within sketch mode, just come back and you know hover over those to see where they are. Clearly it's that right plane that I might want in this case and I could turn that back on and continue using it to do my work. Now I just undo that stuff because I don't actually want that line there. I just wanted to show you about these vision options over here. And you can do that as well to turn on and off your, the view of your sketches. Now as soon as you extrude a sketch and you hit accept, it should turn the vision of that off by default but sometimes you might want to refer to that sketch in a subsequent sketch in, 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 in another sketch. So you might do something, I might be doing a sketch now and want to refer or link on to something that I drew in this one. So I could turn the vision of that back on. But if you leave all of those on, once you have a quite, quite a complex part, you'll end up with pictures and sketches and planes and stuff everywhere and it gets quite messy. So you can turn those off over here just by hovering over it and clicking on that little eyeball. Okay, now what's the next step towards our train here? The next tool that I want to introduce is very, very easy to use, but can make a big difference in a number of ways. First of all, in this case where we're making a train and it's just kind of going to look cool, it'll make a big visual difference. But when in the context of modeling uh, actual part or modeling parts that you're actually going to manufacture, these two tools can be very useful um, in a number of ways. So, and that, that is the fillet tool and the chamfer tool. And there's a big difference between those and I'll talk to you about those now. If we click on the fillet tool, what a fillet is, is in, in this context, is it's basically gonna round the edge off for us. So if I choose an, an entity, in this case is, a, is an edge, it wants me to click on an edge and it's gonna round that over for me. And you can choose the radius of that edge either by clicking and dragging on this arrow here or by punching a number in to your, uh, to your little pop-up box here. And there are some different settings and stuff you could play with here, but usually you'll just leave that. And you can choose multiple edges. A good sort of side goal or a side quest, if you like, when you're in on shape, is to have as few steps as possible on the feature tree over here. And a good way to do that is to, you know, create multiple sketches and then do one extrude rather than doing an, a sketch and then an extrude and then a sketch and then an extrude and so on. And in a case like this, where I might want to round some edges of my train, if I know that there are, you know, six different edges and I want the radius of those fillets to all be the same, I would just do that in one fillet. I wouldn't do that in, you know, three or six different fillets. So what I mean by that is I'm going to choose fillet and I can choose multiple edges. I'm going to choose all of these four. And I could even do these down the front of the train if I wanted to as well. And that's going to start to round off, you know, you could do the back and the bottom. You could really start to round off everything in one go. Um, and then, you know, you can use the arrow here to change the radius on those all together. And they all get the same radius. At some point, if you go too high, it will freak out and it won't be able to do that anymore. It just can't calculate it. It clashes with something. It can't create a body that's that shape or size and it just doesn't work. In this case, I think it's when this join here runs into this wheel arc, it freaks out. But I don't want it to be that crazy anyway, and I actually don't want all of these lines. Now to remove them, you can just click on it again to take that line off, um, or you can click these little X's here in your box next to those lines to clear it out. Now I just want to do, I think I might do, ah, oh, you can also uh, 
If you click on a face, it will do all the surfaces of that face. Now, you can see, if I choose this line, it creates you know, an inverse curve here where it's it's creating a 3D body here. It's creating this bit of 3D space in order to create a round between these two surfaces. Whereas when I choose this one, it's removing this part of 3D space in order to create a round from this surface to this surface. And as a result of that, you can do a whole bunch of things. If you're creating a part that's going to be manufactured, you could use a fillet like this to just strengthen this part and this part by creating more body there it will strengthen that join and so on so you can really use that to your advantage and do some pretty crazy stuff here now I might for my train I just want to fill it those four and I'm happy with the, the default five millimeters in fact I might drop it down to about four just so I'm not really hitting that wheel arc too much but it depends on the dimensions that you've used and that's the fillet tool now the chamfer tool is very similar it also wants you to choose an edge and it's going to do a similar thing where it's either going to add add space or remove space to alter the edge but what a chamfer is is it's going to uh, it's not working around in fact you know what I'm going to do I'm going to delete my fillet because it will be easier for me to explain this a chamfer is going to do exactly the same thing as a fillet except instead of it doing a round like a radius of a you know a corner it's going to do a 45 degree angle so it's going to take that edge and that edge and it's going to create a 45 degree cut to give that a really rigid slant now you can you can control this a lot more it doesn't have to be a 45 degree angle what it's doing here is that the dimension that it lets me put in is millimeters now obviously it doesn't let me put an angle at this stage it wants me to put three millimeters now what that three millimeters is is from the corner of where they join to the start and finish because these lines will be equal if this is a 45 degree triangle it's three millimeters from that point to there and then it will do a 45 millimeter cut and so that's what you're changing in order to control these uh, these chamfers Now, the alternative option here is you can change equal distance. There's a couple of options here to two distances. And now it actually lets you control <coughs> sort of the height and width here separately. And so sometimes it's difficult to figure out which one's which. I just experiment. So if I change this one to 10, okay, it's changing the, the width of the fillet. And the, dis the this one here is my height. So you can get not 45 degree cuts. You can get, you know, different type of angles. The reason you would use this is it's much faster than doing a sketch and drawing a weird rec a weird triangular shape and then extruding it and it's much faster you can sort of grab a whole series of lines and do that all in one go. So in this case I might start with a chamfer on there and then I'm going to fill it these edges four millimeters. I'm just really uh, trial and error experimenting here to get a crazy shape on my train. But anyway, that's an introduction to those extra two tools. Um, and now I might cut a window and maybe add a chimney on the front. Now I'm just going to reuse tools here that I've already shown you. So I'll take it fairly slow. Feel free to pause and stop and rewind the video to rewatch this. But I'm just going to do it and I'm only reusing tools that I've already used. So hopefully you'll be able to follow along. Sketch, pick a face, change my camera view. I'm going to grab my corner rectangle tool and draw a rectangle here. Use my dimension tool to position that away from certain things. I might choose three millimeters from there, three millimeters from there, three millimeters from there, and then I'm just going to alter this to get a height that I'm happy with. Eight millimeters, that looks fine. I might go nine. Okay, and now I'll use the extrude tool and choose remove and change it to through all to remove my window. Hopefully you're able to follow that. And then I could use my fillet tool just to round off the inside edge of that just because I think that might look kind of cool. Just experimenting here with stuff I could do. No, I don't like that. I'll just leave it like this back at maybe three millimeters. 
Okay, so I've made a window. And now I'm going to do a similar thing here to just create a cylindrical chimney on the front of my train. So I'll choose that the hood or the bonnet, if you want to call it that, kind of like on a car. I'm going to draw a circle. If I go and turn on the vision here of these planes, I'll be able to... going on here. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Just had to take a quick call. So what we were doing, I believe, is putting a chimney on here, if I can remember correctly. And I've turned on the view of my three basic planes, spun my view to the top. And now when I choose sketch and I choose this, this is the plane or the surface that I want to do my sketch on. This is my sketch plane. Now I get access to the sketch tools, choose the circle. I'm just going to draw a circle that links onto this center plane so that I know it's in the middle. And I can use my dimension tool to set an appropriate diameter. Again, it's important to use a dimension tool. You wouldn't want to just, whilst you can just click and drag this to change the size of the circle, you could change your dimension later on on something else and on shape will force change the circle, which is annoying. So you want to have this locked in. I might go for a I've got a bit of a plan here. I might do 8. Set that maybe 15. Nah, I might go a bit further. Let's go 18 away. And I'll extrude that up. Not too far. I might go 12, 13 mils here. Okay, now I want to show you another thing here quickly. I'm going to put a circle on top of this that's bigger than this one. So sketch on top of the circle. I'm going to do another circle. When you do a circle within a circle, it will sort of automatically let you snap to the the, the center of the initial circle. It will make a coincentric constraint. And then I'm going to draw another circle. Now your sketch doesn't have to stay inside this plane. It's just using that as a reference point for where the sketch exists in space. It doesn't have to stay inside that area. So when I do another sketch here, I can make it bigger than the first one and I might make it 12 mils and extrude it up further. The thing is now when I do an extrude it's going to see two separate segments. So I could choose just the outside ring or just the inside circle or I could choose both. And in this case I'm going to choose both and I'm only going to do one millimeter and then I'm going to turn on that sketch again and I'm going to come and grab the ring and continue extruding it up a bit more so that we get this kind of inside and that saved me from having to draw, uh, extrude a big cylinder, draw another circle on the top and cut it in. Again, I've reduced a step here. I've got one less sketch. Turn off the vision. You can see I can see this dotted line now and that could be annoying throughout the work so I'll just disable view of that again. And there's my little chimney on the front um, and that's probably a pretty good length video. I was going to start to also create a new part studio and make wheels and then show you assembly. I might do that in a separate video though because assembling can get quite complex so it probably deserves a video of its own. But we looked at today, we learned some new tools. So we looked at chamfering and filleting are probably the main two. And then I just talked a little bit more about accessing vision of planes and using the dimension tool to position stuff and, and sketches within other sketches. Hope that helps guys. I'll see you in the next one.